Now we're going to go and do an overview of some of the basic chemistry of lipids. Fatty acids are typically stored as uh, triacylglycerols. So here up here we have some fatty acids, different types of fatty acids, saturated and unsaturated. And they get attached to a three carbon glycerol molecule through ester linkages. So anytime you have a carbon, oxygen, carbon with a carbonyl, that's called an ester linkage. And so the attachment of a fatty acid to a glycerol uh, moiety is known as esterification. Now, you, so you get these three esterifications, and usually on the number two carbon, you'll get an unsaturated fatty acid. And so just to review kind of the numbering system, uh, the first number is telling you how many carbons there are. The second number is telling you how many double bonds. And so over here we have three numbers. So there's 18 carbons on this trans-9 octadecanoic acid. Uh, so 18 carbons involved, one double bond, and it's at the ninth position. So the trans is telling you that uh, this uh, bond... It, that these two bonds are trans from each other. This one's coming down, this one's going up. Whereas, for example, right here, this one's cis. They're both going up away from the double bond. Now you have glycerol phospholipids. So if you uh, look back at this on carbon number one, we still have our R is representing our fatty acid carbon chain. So we still have a, a fatty acid on carbon one and carbon two. But carbon three gets replaced with a phosphatidic group. There are several different phosphatidic moieties, but their main purpose is to uh, make a head group that uh, is polar with the nonpolar uh, carbon chain. So this becomes amphipathic. Amphipathic uh, is uh, amphipathic. Uh, Phospholipids are really important, especially for membrane structure. So uh, this polar head group will orient itself with water, while the nonpolar fatty acids will orient with each other, creating the cell membrane. The synthesis of triacylglycerols and glycerol phospholipids share the same first step. So you can either uh, start with dihydroxyacetone from glycolysis and uh, convert it to glycerol 3-phosphate with the glycerol D-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and NADH, or you can start with glycerol itself and um, phosphorylate it with ATP uh, using glycerol kinase, and that happens in the liver. This gives us L-glycerol 3-phosphate. So at this point, we could attach fatty acids here and here and uh, alter, um, alter the phosphate head group, and we'd have a glycerol phospholipid. Or we could attach fatty acids at all three positions, replacing the phosphate, and we'd have a triacylglycerol. So the next step in that reaction is you get your fatty acid. So this is our fatty acid and coenzyme A. Uh, whenever coenzyme A is by itself, it's usually co it's usually represented as COASH, and the SH is the thiol group that's on it. So coenzyme A combines with fatty acid through acyl-CoA synthase, uh, forming your acyl-CoA, and then the acyl transferase pulls the coenzyme A off and uh, form, uh, attaches the acyl group to uh, either the one or the two carbon. And this happens twice. At that point, you get phosphatidic acid. So you get phosphate on the glycerol backbone with two acyl groups. So this is phosphatidic acid that can either be used to make triacylglycerol or glycerol phospholipid by adding one of several head, head groups to the phosphate. These head groups include things like inositol or serine or choline and there's several others that I don't even know.